this is why a lot of young people uh, do not receive a lot of blessings because they forget one of these simple commandments. And it's the, I believe it's the sixth commandment uh, in the Ten Commandments, right? What does he say here? Uh, that's maybe the fifth or sixth. Honor thy father and thy mother, verse 12, Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. All we know is honor thy mother and father. But do you realize when you do that, it doesn't say honor your mother and father because they're a pastor or the first lady, a deacon, a minister, born again. It says honor thy mother and father. I don't care if they're a drunkard. They're homeless. I don't care what their attitude is. Now, we sure, we're going to stretch it out. They're abusive and whipping you and doing, you know, sexual in the windows and things like that. Of course, you know, you need to get away from that. But it doesn't say honor them because they're born again. It says, God says, you honor your mother and father, period. You will have long life upon the earth. Do you hear me? Don't honor them because they're pastor so-and-so. You honor them because there's daddy. Amen? You honor her because she's mommy. Because they gave you life. Amen? They have been entrusted with God to raise you up in the way in which thou should go. Amen? Now let's go over to Luke chapter 7. Now I come out of victory so y'all know I jumped through the word. Amen? For now you're starting to see the anointing. <laughs> Amen? Okay, we're going to look at the centurion. Um, the story of the centurion. Now, wouldn't you like to have Jesus marvel at you? And young people, you can have Jesus marvel at you just by the way you honor your mother and father. He can marvel at you. How does he marvel? By anointing you and blessing you with long life. Amen? Because the father's objective is to what? Leave an inheritance for his children's children. You know? For his children's children. That's the way he can go off to be with heaven. And one of the greatest things is not the material a parent can give you, but the laying on of hands of blessings he can give you. By just laying his hands on his child, he has gave you the greatest blessing there ever could be. By saying, I bless you. Amen? But we look for this monetary thing. Give me some new hundred dollar sneakers. Give me the Gucci. Give me this. Give me that. That can wear out in a minute. But the blessing of the father and mother can never wear out. Amen? Amen. Seek it. Luke chapter 7. And most of you know this story. It's about the centurion, but we're going to read it a little bit from verses 1 to 10, okay? Now, when he had ended all his sayings, uh, the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For, the, for he loveth our nation, and he buildeth us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent his friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou should have entered under my roof. Wherefore, neither thou I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And I say unto another, Come, and he cometh. And I say and, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said unto them, the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. Now, one of the things I've noticed, when you look at the words, go, come, do, there's no period behind it, and each one of them is capitalized. Go, come, and do. Each one of them are capitalized. So that, that grabbed my attention. Why are these words capitalized and there's no period? Because they're action words. They're performance words. Amen? They're words of authority. Amen. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? See, back then, the centurion, let me get a little background on the centurion. The centurion served in the army. They were the most disciplined Roman soldiers you could ever have. And when they served, they couldn't get married. 
So that's why this servant of his wasn't even his child. He had been a servant for, with this man for 20 years. They over, uh, a centurion uh, is over maybe 5,200 men. They don't have 